Hello everyone, Ether Song here, and today I'm going to be looking at Amoclore TRPG. It is a TRPG that has been rising in popularity in Japan. First up by TRPG, I mean tabletop or table talk role playing game. TRPGs are games that use pen, paper, and dice to role play. Some examples would be D&D or Call of Cthulhu. The unique thing about Amoclore TRPG is that it's a completely free indie TRPG that has been released in Japan. Everything from the rulebook to various scenarios can be found online. It was created by the Dice to Us team and it consists of various YouTubers from Japan that hope to promote the TRP genre and introduce more players to it. So let's look at what Amoclore TRPG is about. So Amoclore, the word comes from two words and these are the two key elements to the game. First up is emotional and then folklore. So in the game there's various oddities like supernatural beings or I don't know, yokai, spirits, ghosts, things like that and they affect the natural world by altering people's emotions. So that's where these two key elements come into play and it forms the word here, amoclore. So I'm going to be going through the descriptions of what the world's like and some of the rules of the game. But first up, a disclaimer, everything I've gotten here, I've taken from their site, the rules and such not. But everything on their site is in Japanese, so these are my own translations. So if there's anything that sounds a little bit strange, it's probably just me translating a little bit strangely. <laughs> so keep that in mind. So let's get started. First up, here's a description of the world of Amoclore. Another world, much like the reality we live in. A world next to ours filled with supernatural beings. Oddities. The word, word for oddities here, I've translated from Kai. So that is the setting of Amoclore TRPG. Amoclore, or rather beings called oddities, possess or meddle with people they meet and mess with their emotions. People's original emotions may be distorted or controlled by a new emotion. Whatever the case, these are the tales of such people who had their emotions altered and incidents which the oddities caused. You take on the role of a person who is wrapped up in these events. Amoclore is a game where you get to experience the story firsthand. So as an idea or like a visual of what the world of Amoclore is like, here are two anime that I've chosen. You have Bakemono Gatari and also Natsume Yujin Cho. And so what the world of Amoclore is like, it's the current world, so the, the current world we live in with just normal people, but they get wrapped up in supernatural events. So with Bakemono Gatari, there's a bunch of strange things or strange oddities that also make appearances. And Natsume Yujin Cho, I guess you have various yokai and whatnot that make appearances. So those yokai or various oddities that appear in these shows are some of the things that you might expect to meet in the Amoclore game. So let's look at the participants of the game. You have the players and the dealer. So the players act as the protagonists of the story and create characters called Resonators. Dealers prepare the scenario and they explain situations to players and take on the role of non-Resonator characters in the game, like NPCs, to move the story along. Dealers have the power to make final decisions on everything that happened during the session. During the session, players should obey the decisions made by the dealer. So I guess making a Dungeons and Dragons comparison, the dealer would be something like the Dungeon Master. But they lead the story and they lead the players through the story. So preparing for the game, the following is needed to play a McClure TRPG. So you need dice. So for each person, around three 10-sided dice and two six-sided dice. A rule book, which can be found online and character sheets, which also can be created online. 
There are also tools available to assist with online play. So if you want to get a group together online, there's tools to assist you to do that. So you'd be able to play with a group online. Now let's look at the players in the game. So these are the resonators. Player characters and protagonists of the game. They are the people who resonate with the story and are wrapped up in incidents that occur. What they resonate with can vary among things such as the oddities which cause an inc incidents, other people in the story, or even the story itself. No special ability is needed to resonate. Any person has a potential to resonate with the story for various reasons, such as chance, fate, or affinity. So by no special abilities need to resonate, this is just saying that the players or the resonators are just normal people that get wrapped up in supernatural events. So first thing players need to do is create their character, their resonator. And when doing that, they can first have eight abilities, which they can choose how many points they wanted to put into each one. This is a pretty common thing for various RPGs. So you have things like physique, dexterity, mind, senses, intelligence, charisma, social, and luck. Next, there's also skills to choose from. So in this game, there are 49 different skills and they are divided into seven major groups. You have investigation skills, perception skills, negotiation skills, information skills, athletic skills, survival skills, and special skills. And these skills help you perform various actions or tasks while playing the game. Next up is an important aspect, or one of the most important aspects of Amoclore TRPG, which is a special skill called Infinite Resonance. So when people encounter oddities or supernatural phenomena or strong emotions distorted by them, People are influenced by them and have their emotions or soul eroded. So infinite resonance is a skill which show, shows how much erosion resonators have received from these oddities. So it's kind of like almost being like corrupted or slowly eaten away by these oddities you meet. You slowly succumb to them as you play the game. And as you succumb to them, you become weaker and more susceptible to what they do. So you what their effects have on you. So during a play session, when resonators approach an oddity, they perform a special check called a resonance check. The infinite resonance skill increases as a result of this check. So if you succumb to the resonance, your resonance skill also slowly increases and you become even more susceptible in the future. As the infinite resonance skill increases, the erosion from the oddity also increases, causing the player to be more strongly influenced by them. This leads to things like the player's emotions and mind being distorted, abnormalities with the body, or being pulled into strange phenomena. The max level of the infinite resonance skill is 9. If the skill goes to 10 or above, the influence from the oddities exceeds the amount a resonator can handle, causing something irreparable to occur. They can no longer hold on to their consciousness as a result or as a human, and they are taken over by oddities, become an oddity themselves, or become a shell of their former self. So it's like, I don't know, the corruption or the erosion from the oddities have exceeded the human limit. You can't take any more and you just succumb to it. Like it says here, you can become taken over, like possessed. You can become out of the yourself or you just become like a shell of what you were. And if you end the session in that state, you're considered like gone or dead or I don't know, just lost forever. And you can't use your character in future sessions then. All right, so now going back to the creation of the resonator, when you make a resonator, you need to choose resonate emotions. So these um, are emotions that more easily resonate with resonators are called resonate emotions. If a resonate emotion is close to the disposition of oddities, encountered or strong emotions of other people, resonators are more heavily influenced by that emotion. 
So if you have a stronger bond, emotional bond with the oddities that you encounter, then you are more easy, you more easily succumb to them. So players choose three resonate emotions. So first you have your surface emotion. This is your, so your surface emotion is one that others see from you and you see from yourself. And you have a hidden emotion, so like almost like a sub subconscious emotion within you. The emotion within you hidden below the surface, an emotion that you are not aware of. And then finally you have a root emotion. A root emotion is one that forms the foundation of your character, or rather your most fundamental emotion. So these three emotions make up your character and affect how you resonate with various oddities you encounter. After that, the session starts once resonator characters have been created. Players roleplay as their characters and talk to other characters, say their thoughts, and take actions. When resonators take actions to determine if they succeed or fail, they make checks. So to make these checks, dice are used to check if you succeeded or failed. When it comes to dice, there's some terminology here. So you have D something, and this something is the sided die, so how many si sides it has. So if you said D10, it means a 10-sided die. And then there's also a number you can put before that to describe the number of dice. So if you said 3D6, it would mean three six-sided dice. And this is something common in TRPGs. So let's look at the basic of checks. Skills are used to make checks. The same number of d10 as the skill level are used when making a check. So for example, when making a check with a level two perception skill, you would use two d10. So you have a level two skill, so you use two 10-sided dice. The next up is counting the number of success dice. So skills each have a different check level. So if you look at the skill description, it'll say what the check level is. So each rolled die with a value equal to or lower than the check level is considered a success dice. Success die. So the number of success dice equals the success value and determines the check result. So for example, if you had a 2d10 perception check with a check level of 3, you need to have your dice roll a number 3 or under to succeed. So if you rolled a 2 and a 5, 2 would be successful and 5 would be a failure. So we would have one success with a success value of 1 total. There's also things called critical dice and air dice in this game. If a 1 is rolled, it's called a critical dice. And if a 10 is rolled, it's called an air dice. So for each critical dice, the success value gets plus 1. So if you rolled 1 critical dice and everything else was failures, then you'd get 1 for success and then 1 extra for the critical dice value. And then you have things called these air dice. And so for each air dice rolled, you would minus one from the success value. So if you only rolled failures and then like an air dice, you would actually go negative. So depending on the final success value, the checked result changes. So if you were to go negative, so if you only had like air dice or the air dice succeeded the number of success, you would have a minus value. And this would be considered a fumble. A fumble is a fatal failure, a serious blunder, and you receive some sort of penalty. If you just had a normal zero, so no successes, you would just fail at an action. If you had one success, so it would just be considered a normal success. If you had two, it would be considered a effective success. Three would be extreme success. And then four to nine is considered like a miracle. And if you somehow manage to get 10 or more successes at something, 
it would be considered a catastrophic success. The results of an action affect a wide area by a large scale. But this would be rather uncommon in the game, but if it were to happen, it would be like a crazy event that would occur. <laughs> so whatever you were doing. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so, and like I said at the beginning, everything about the descriptions of this game can be found on their site online. So this is the uh, first screen you see on their site online. But if you go there and scroll down, you can find the rule books, character sheets, and downloads for various things, and various resources for online play. So they have, like I said, various scenarios that you can also download to use. So if you have, were the dealer, and you wanted to set up a scenario, you could use one that's already been prepared for you. These are various like interesting things. They have like strange phenomena like this Kisaragi Eki, Kisaragi Station, is all the players wake up on a train and they're like the only ones there. And they get off at this abandoned station. And for some reason, how did they get to this station? And why is it abandoned? And like what's happening? So they needed to it's kind of like a mystery horror kind of element, which is used to describe, I think, a lot of the scenarios for this game. It's kind of like the mystery and sometimes horror comes into play for this game. And these are some other scenarios here. But yeah, so that was a description of Amoclore TRPG. Let me know if you thought the video was interesting and you want any more Amoclore content. So as always, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again. Bye.